So this is me. I am your host today. And uh, my name is Pam Frackmeyer. I am an herbalist. Um, I've been studying herbs and other plants for a little over seven years now. Uh, I didn't start on this journey um, like a lot of other herbalists that I know. I got interested in it through my garden. I uh, grew up on a dairy farm and my mom, she had a huge garden. And so that in turn had me and my siblings um, picking weeds um, uh, quite a bit. It drove me nuts. And uh, when it was my turn, I had to roll peas, potatoes. Uh, as a child, it's just something you don't want to be doing. But today, I love it. It is my therapy for um, de-stressing, and I can't get enough of it. And it was actually basil and rosemary, which I was growing in my garden, that turned uh, the page for me. And I wanted to find out um, what qualities they had. So I started researching, and when I found out that there was like medicinal qualities that were involved with these plants, I, I wanted to learn more and to see if other plants did as well. And then that is how I got discovered in herbalism, or how I discovered herbalism and what plants can do to help us and make us more healthy. And uh, I've been hooked ever since. Also, I just wanted to let everyone know that I am not a doctor. I am an herbalist and I'm not providing any medical advice. All the information provided here is purely educational. Um, everybody's body is different. So what I'm sharing with you here tonight may or may not apply to you. So hopefully it'll get you thinking and get you to do some research. Um, having a good and healthy life is your responsibility. And the final decision for your health is your decision. Um, so that is me. That is my uh, background. So who is this webinar for? Uh, varicose veins uh, affects a number of people in many different ways. Some uh, can be bothered by them. Others are not. So this is for you if you have varicose veins and are concerned with them. Um, that also includes hem hemorrhoids, which is another form of varicose veins, which I will get into a little bit um, down the road. So if you have varicose veins, this is for you. Also, if you want to help someone who has varicose veins, um, maybe, you know, mother, father, brother, sister, friend, um, that are looking um, to uh, maybe get rid of their varicose veins, this would be for you. You can share this knowledge with them or um, so that they can move on. Also, if you practice alternative medicine and you want to be able to help others um, who, who come in to see you with varicose veins, this should hopefully be able to pro provide you with some information to assist them. Okay, what will we be covering in this webinar? First, what are varicose veins? So I'll go into exactly what they are and how they come about. Uh, they can affect everyone differently depending on how bad they are and where they are located. So we'll go into that a little bit. Why does one get varicose veins? Um, there are a number of different causes, and it can be because of genetics, what we do to our bodies um, in terms of diet or physical labor. So you can see where you fall in and uh, what you need to do to um, either prevent or um, reduce your varicose veins. And then we'll get into who gets varicose veins and, then if, um, and who is most likely to develop them. Nobody is immune to uh, getting varicose veins. So depending on how um, you take care of your body, like I said in the previous slide, may or may not depend on whether you get them and how bad you um, they can develop for you. And then we'll get into some prevention methods. And of course, this may be too late for those of you who already have varicose veins, but that doesn't mean you can't use some of this information and start utilizing it today to uh, reduce your varicose veins or minimize them uh, because it you know it can help with those conditions as well and it works differently for everybody and then um, things you can do if you already have varicose veins we'll look at that um, there are alternatives to surgery and so that is kind of what the focus of this webinar is uh, today 
And then at the end, uh, I will go over um, Q&A. Whoever um, has any questions, we'll, um, I'll review those. And if I don't get to it, um, please, you know, come back to the YouTube channel and put in, your com put in the comment section and I will get those answered. So what are varicose veins? Veins in general are a necessity for life. We all have them, whether it be us, plants, animals, um, everybody, everything, every living creature needs veins to, to live. And like here in the picture, veins can be very pretty. They can show character and design. They look rather artistic and can be very um, aesthetic. Veins support life and are a driving force for survival. Veins can be found, um, in, like I said, in, in everything from um, humans to plants and to animals. We need veins to survive. That They are what carry the nutrients in and the waste out of our bodies. But sometimes veins can get out of control and, and turn varicose. Uh, for most part, varicose veins are just like a cosmetic nuisance for most of us and maybe mildly discomfortable, but, but don't really pose a serious health problem. They're just kind of ugly. Uh, for many people, especially women, uh, these are not what we want because they can be unsightly, ugly, just, they're just not attractive and um, wearing dresses, shorts, just not something we want to um, uh, be looking at. So we feel uncomfortable and that's why um, we have an issue with them. Um, FYI, hemorrhoids, um, like I said earlier, are a form of varicose veins, so we'll um, touch on them uh, later. So varicose veins, what are they? Arteries take blood from our heart to different parts of our body, while the veins take the blood back to the heart. So the veins basically work with um, little valves, valves that open and close pushing the blood back to your heart. Um, you can see on the top right what a good valve would look like. This is moving the, this, or moving this blood is hard work uh, because it takes a lot of movement. And most of the time it's going against gravity, such as like, you know, in your legs where most varicose veins are found because that's where the valves have to work the hardest. And all the blood needs to get back to your heart. That's a long way and that's a lot of valve action. The picture on the lower right belt shows the valves that have become relaxed and are not quite working to their fullest capacity. And then because of that, they're not pushing all the blood up, the blood starts to fall back down and it starts to pool in between those valves. And then as more blood pools in those areas, that vein becomes engorged and then eventually becomes varicose. Uh, most varicose veins that are near the surface of the skin aren't harmful. They may be, but just be ugly and sometimes um, maybe a little discomfort, a um, little um, irritating um, for a few people. Uh, but just be aware that not all varicose veins are visible. Uh, for some people, deeper veins can become inflamed and cause serious health issues um, that can lead to clots, strokes, or other heart problems. And then though for that, um, you would definitely want to partner with your physician who can sometimes through symptoms, clinical signs, clinical signs or an ultrasound can be, see if whether if you not you have varicose veins that may be um, a little bit deeper under the skin. And then FYI, venostasis dermatitis, which um, you may or may not um, be familiar with, it's similar to varicose veins in that the veins leak, start to leak fluid under the skin, which uh, can lead to like itching, pain, and then oozing. Um, so it, it's like, it's basically varicose veins that have like gone bad, they've erupted. And that's definitely um, an issue you'd want to see a medical doctor, or your uh, physician with your healthcare, healthcare provider. So, what cause what causes varicose veins and why does one get them varicose veins have become more prevalent in today's society because of the path our culture has taken the growth rate of obesity and sleep disorders not getting enough sleep 
blood pressure levels have skyrocketed, hormonal changes and genetic disorders are just a few of the factors that contribute to varicose veins. There are other factors too, uh, such as pregnancy or standing for periods of time. And that especially can put like 10 times more pressure on your veins, giving you a higher chance of developing varicose veins. Also muscle mass and tissue starts to weaken as one ages, thus opening up the door to varicose veins. So as your skin and tissue are becoming weaker with the pressure from the veins in the inside with the blood, the veins will expand and cause varicose veins. Um, hemorrhoids, a form of varicose veins, but different, can be caused by pressure and trauma. Um, and some of, those same, some, some of those same conditions, such as obesity, pregnancy, um, diarrhea, constipation, or long periods of sitting can um, create um, the problem of hemorrhoids. And then another key, likely key factor is also is liver dysfunction. So um, if you do have um, hemorrhoids, you may want to make sure that you're having your liver looked at. Who gets varicose veins? Anyone. Anyone can get varicose veins. Um, it does rise with age due to your, you know, your muscles and your tissues becoming weaker, and that way the veins can expand. About 60% of Americans suffer from some sort of vein disorder. Women are more affected by men. Um, KP Kalsa, uh, one of the foremost natural healing experts in North America, says that about 17% of American men and about 31% of American women have varicose veins. And then according to the National Women's Health Information Center, about 41% of all women will experience abnormal leg veins by the time they are 50, which is like am amazing. Um, also, women's skin is slightly more softer and moister than men's. Um, one of the reasons women develop varicose veins more than men. Um, also, um, those stats could be um, a little off since men aren't as quick to go to the doctor and even bother with varicose veins as much as women are. So there, the stats there might be um, a little one-sided because if men aren't going in to have them looked at, they're, uh, obviously they're not going to be um, uh, recorded. It also says 50% of those who have varicose veins have them because of genetics and either one or both parents have had them. So if one parent has varicose veins, just one parent, either mother or the father, daughters are 60% more likely to develop them and sons are 25% more likely to, to get them. So that's quite astounding. Um, according to a grand, or to, according to a report by Grandview Research in 2016, it is the most common disease in the world, and it affects about 5% of the population in the Western countries. So that's kind of scary. It's, it's highly, um, or it's easily treatable, but yet one of the most prevalent. So if both your parents have varicose veins, you have about 90% chance of getting them, but there are things you can do to prevent them from happening. Um, varicose veins can easily be treated either with a diet, lifestyle, or supplements, or a combination of these. Um, keep in mind, if you have varicose veins, it took a number of years for them to appear. They just didn't, you know, all of a sudden you wake up one morning and you got varicose veins. It took a while for them to appear. So it's going to need some patience and some time to reverse that process. And and, and it also needs some dedication. You need, you need to be dedicated to either working on your diet, lifestyle, or taking supplements to be able to reverse that effect. So first of all, good digestion. Um, I think that digestion affects many, many, many health issues and varicose veins is one. If your digestion is lacking, this causes you to not get the vitamins and minerals you need to have healthy tissue states. Uh, one of the good, one of the things you'd really want to focus on is making sure you're getting enough soluble fiber, such as beans, chia seed, oats, or psyllium, and then lots of water to help build healthy veins. Um, studies have shown that those who have more fiber in the diet have less varicose veins. 
So diet is a key component. Create and maintain healthy veins. So making sure that you have some strong vein walls. So by getting to that point, make sure in your diet you're getting a lot of vegetables, fruits, um, legumes, and grains. Um, some of the most the, the more important ones, buckwheat, hawthorn berries, cherries, blueberries, black currants, and blackberries. They're all high in flavonoids, which can improve the function and integrity of your vascular system. So, and they also have an astringent quality that will help tighten the tissue and then keep those veins um, a little more st strengthened so that they're not bulging out and your um, the valves are working correct properly to be able to keep that blood flowing. So if you want to look for the red and the purple pigmented fruit, those are um, the ones that are high in your flavonoids. So for example, like a cup of blueberries, a blueberries a day would be great for um, varicose veins. Improving your blood flow, making sure your blood doesn't become Stagnant. You want to keep that blood moving. And uh, there's a few ways you could do that. Ginger. Ginger or any other warming herb such as ginger or um, turmeric. Those, they're warm. They keep the blood flowing. Um, eggplant um, is also, um, it's, it's like a warming plant. And it's great for um, vein health. And uh, there's been some studies out there that show that uh, eggplant is uh, good for um, improving your blood flow. Exercise. Exercise uh, helps with a lot of things, or just about everything in your body. It's exercise, exercise, exercise. And that is another one way to get your blood flowing. So keep it uh, going. Even if you're just only going out for a 30 minute walk, you know, every every other day, just a little bit of exercise to get the heart rate up, to get you going, will make a huge difference um, down the road. And then try and get out of the mentality that genetics are going to rule what happens to your body. Don't let them dictate how healthy you can be or are. Genetics just determine which parts of you will fall apart first? So, you know, making sure you're managing your stress. Um, what kind of lifestyle do you have? What kind of diet? What are you, what are you eating? Um, how much exercise are you getting? Are you getting enough sleep? These are all things that can maintain and help improve a healthy lifestyle, including um, preventing and main, uh, reducing varicose veins. So it's, it's one of those things where you need to take action and get out there and, and just do it. So when varicose veins begin, um, also a side note, the brain sends a protein called fibrin to the location to, it's kind of like a band-aid. So your vein, your varicose vein is starting, it's starting to, you know, um, uh, uh, become um, in, engorged. And so this little band-aid comes down to kind of help prevent inflammation. Well, then it just kind of sits there because it can't get absorbed because you got a bad vein. And so that's what creates the lumpy look um, in varicose veins. It's all these little bandages that are trying to, to help, but they just can't because they just don't have what they need. And then especially as your body gets older, your body has a harder time breaking down this fibrin. Uh, but you can, you can change that. Um, cayenne ginger, nato, bromelain, which uh, comes from pineapple, all will help in breaking down the fibrin, that protein. So fibrin is needed. It's not something we don't want because if we didn't have the fibrin, every time you got cut, you would keep on bleeding because fibrin is what is like, um, uh, it's like a, it helps clot the blood. So it's something we need, but it needs to be, it needs to be stayed in check. So um, taking, like I said, the cayenne, ginger, natal bromelain, those are a couple things that you can um, take to help with that, um, those uh, bandages on your varicose veins. 
So we'll go into some of the remedies here. Um, first, we'll start with some of the, the Western medicine, which uh, most of us are probably familiar with. Uh, Western medicine um, treats varicose veins in a, in a few different ways. Uh, one can be by injections, which basically causes a blockage to stop the blood flow. And then your body will automatically create new veins uh, around that area to nourish the skin and, and the tissue in that area. Another way is just by removing the bad or varicose veins. Um, these methods are intrusive to the body. You're, you're, you're cutting the body open just like any other surgery. And that, um, any, just like any other type of surgery, can lead to um, or may lead to inflammation or other issues down the road. Um, compression socks are also sometimes um, recommended by today's doctors to help um, support the leg and, and the tissue um, in the area. And I, I just want to—I wanted to go this route. Um, I think people, or I think people, take this route um, because they want instant gratification. We want—we want it done now. We wanted to leave the doctor's office. We don't want varicose veins. And um, in reality, I think today's society has become, you know, rather vain. We you know everything has to be perfect and in line. And then, whereas with like more herbal and natural recommendations, it can take a year or two to see re results um, depending on the on the condition. So it's a route that you have to decide um, which one you want to take. Uh, by 2024, the treatment for varicose veins will be pulling in over $475 million. Uh, that, that's like crazy insane, um, especially since uh, Varicose veins are something that we can control uh, just through diet, exercise, lifestyle. Uh, but like I in the last slide talking about, people want instant gratification. They want it now. So they're willing to open up their pocketbook to get that. Uh, one of the uh, forms um, that Western medicine uses is scleropathy. And that involves injecting a solution right into the vein. And then this causes the vein to scar, which then forces the blood to reroute through other veins or creates new veins. And then the, the vein that was injected into, it eventually just dies and it gets absorbed into the tissue and then eventually fades away. Usually these treated veins uh, will fade within a few weeks after the procedure. Uh, though occasionally it could take a little longer, maybe a month or more, um, for everything to disappear. In some instances, um, these treatments, um, or several of these treatments, may be needed to get the desired effect for the, the, uh, the person involved. Some of the side effects from this procedure, there could be some bruising, some raised red areas, um, small skin sores, Darken skin in the form of lines or spots or multiple tiny red vessels. Uh, these, si these side effects will usually go away uh, after a few days or several weeks, though some could take um, months or maybe years to disappear depending on um, the condition and the person. Everybody is different. Complications, um, though even the very, very few um, but there's still a chance for it. Inflammation. Every time you cut your body open, um, surgery, there's definitely um, a, a percentage that inflammation could set in. Um, also, uh, there is a chance for blood clots, air bubbles, or some people, especially in today's world, an allergic reaction. Then we go to endovenous ablation. And this is a, using um, radio frequency or laser energy, which basically cauterizes and closes the varicose veins. Okay, and here I have um, a little video from the Mayo Clinic. I'll show you this procedure. It's just a quick little video that kind of shows what is done for this procedure. Before performing endovenous thermal ablation, the skin and surrounding tissues are numb. The proceduralist makes a small cut in the skin, into which he or she inserts a very thin tube called a cap.
catheter. The catheter is guided into the vein to be treated using ultrasound imaging. The proceduralist applies radio frequency or laser energy to the enlarged vein through the catheter's tip. As the catheter is pulled out, the heat causes the vein to collapse and eventually heal shut. The blood will then reroute through other veins. After this, people um, are, or the patients are usually instructed to wear some compression socks because it kind of helps the tissue hold those areas um, a little more um, solid so that way they can heal. The average age for people having this type of treatment is about 52 years old. Uh, mm -hmm. And about 83% of the people having this procedure done are women. Um, some complications um, similar to um, the prior treatment, um, infection, um, maybe some pain, pain irritation, um, a little bleeding or bruising, um, maybe some nerve damage, blood clots, change in skin color. It just kind of depends. Um, and there may not be any at all. Um, from this, you know, Western medicine, it's quick, but it also destroys the vein by either removing them. Um, and, and this really isn't healing. It's just you're, you're taking the vein out, but you're not really working with the cause of why this person has varicose veins. Because if the person continues their lifestyle, the varicose veins are just going to pop up in another location. Okay, and then another um, Western form of um, helping with varicose veins is it's called stripping. And this is kind of done as an outpatient basis. Uh, this procedure takes about 60 to 90 minutes to do. Uh, and incisions are made, one at the bottom of the leg and then at one end of the vein, and then the second incision is made more, more um, in the groin area. And then they will thread a thin, flexible plastic wire into the vein through the groin incision, and then the, the wire will be tied to the vein and then pulled out through the cut in the lower leg. And then the surgeon then closes off the cuts and stitches, bandages, and then you wear compression socks um, for a while. Uh, the recovery time here is about two to four weeks, depending on how many veins are stripped out and, and exactly where they're located and probably how bad they are. Um, complications, it's same, similar to the two other procedures. Um, there may be, you know, an allergic reaction um, if there's anesthesia involved. Um, infection at the incision sites, here you got two um, incisions that are made. Um, there could be some blood clotting, bruising, um, scarring, or maybe some nerve injury because you are... Um, going through the leg and pulling those veins out. So now we'll look at some herbal remedies that can help support um, the veins in your body. First of all, turmeric. Uh, we probably have all heard of turmeric or used it in some form or fashion uh, with uh, various dishes one has made or eaten. Uh, turmeric, but it's also good for very varicose veins. Uh, it is has some high anti-inflammatory properties, which comes from the curcumin, but it's also astringent, and those help strengthen the vein walls and shrink the variscosity. So to, to take turmeric, you, you need to take turmeric in order to benefit from all these constituents because curcumin on its own will not help with varicose veins. So if you already are taking um, that as a supplement, um, it's not really gonna help. You need to take turmeric because then you're going to get that astringent property that is in there to help with your varicose veins. Um, KP Kalsa, uh, a Ayurvedic um, herbalist suggests starting with about 500 milligrams a day in a capsule and gradually increase and you should start to see improvement over several weeks um, with that. Uh, you can also use turmeric um, topically, uh, rub it, um, maybe put it like in a coconut oil or any other um, like carrier oil, uh, but just keep in mind turmeric stains and unless you want yellow skin, um, that may not be the best option, but, but it will help do the trick. Go to Kula is uh, beneficial for supporting the connective tissue, which basically that's what veins are. 
So it also helps with um, eczema and bruising, uh, cellulite, dermatitis, um, hair and nails. And it also helps with wound healing, which basically that's what a varicose vein is. It's a wounded vein. Gotokula is more known uh, for being a brain herb. So if you want to take it, you can get killed two birds with one stone, cure your brain and uh, heal your legs. It can be, it's a more, it's like a, it's a green, so it can, you can eat it in soups and salads. It's very similar to spinach. Uh, it is um, a plant from Asia, so it's very hard to find it here. You're not, I don't know if you'll be able to find it um, in a grocery store or a health supermarket, uh, but there are some herbalists that do grow it. It, it likes a more um, moist, marshy type of environment, so um, it is kind of hard, but otherwise you can get it in capsule form. Hawthorn berry, uh, that's part of the rose family, and they are very, very high in flavonoids. So that's very, very great for the vascular system. Um, Hawthorn berries are very tart and, and bitter just on their own, but um, people do eat them, make um, like tarts, pies with them. They also can be taken in the form of a powder or you'll find them a lot in teas. So that's a good way to um, take them. Otherwise, if you're looking more for the um, easy, quick way, there's also powders, uh, extracts, or capsule form. And, and if you're lucky, you may know where some grow, and you can just go and, and harvest them when they are ready and then get them fresh, which is, I think, that the best way to, to utilize them. Amaranth is a uh, great plant for helping with varicose veins. It contains a flavonoid called lutein, which is directly connected to eliminating varicose veins by strengthening the capillary walls. Um, this is also aided by its high concentration of vitamin C, which is that vitamin C plays a huge role in the production of collagen, which we know is helps, it's in the tissue, it's in your skin, and that helps to repair and strengthen your the, uh, the blood vessel walls. Um, amaranth was a uh, huge food staple for the Aztecs years ago, and it's very nutritional because it contains all the essential amino acids. It, it is not a grain, um, it is a seed, so it's gluten-free, which is uh, another plus. It also is very low in carbs. Uh, one thing, you can't just eat the seeds raw uh, because uh, you really can't digest them, so you do need to cook them and It'll kind of turn out like a, like a porridge. Uh, you can also take the seeds and pop them like popcorn. Uh, just uh, Google uh, pop, pop amaranth and it's very simple um, how to do it. Uh, I, my parents have a ton of amaranth I found out last year growing. So uh, my goal this summer is to gather as much as I can and try and pop some amaranth. Uh, but amaranth, it's, it's found all over. It's, it grows like a weed. It, it's found in alleyways, on the sides of fields and gardens. It really likes disturbed soil, and it grows like crazy. So if you find it, it's a quick, easy fix, and it's very nutritional for you as well. And it'll help with your varicose veins. Garlic. Just about everybody uh, eats garlic at some point. Um, in their um, daily diet or um, weekly diet. Garlic is great for blood pressure, blood fat, circulation, and many other wonderful health benefits. So it's just all around a good cardiovascular herb. Um, it's easily available, as we all know, you can find it in, in uh, every grocery store or you can grow it and, uh, and get it into your diet. It's, it's not only great for the blood circulation, but at this time of the year, it's also great for um, helping support the immune system as well and fighting off those um, bad pathogens. Violets are another plant that can be found abundantly all over um, in the, especially in the, in the spring, early summer, in lawns, gardens, sidewalks, all over um, in, uh, here in America. And it's, for some people, they kind of consider it a weed. Uh, if they have a uh, perfect lawn that is some violets are not something they want growing so unfortunately it falls into the weed category for some 
Um, the leaves on the violet are a good source of soluble, soluble fiber, which um, I mentioned um, earlier in the webinar that soluble fiber is very, very beneficial to good vein health. Uh, violets also contain the flavonoid rutin um, as too, so it helps with preventing and diminishing those varicose veins. And not only that, but violets also help cleanse the blood. So a very, very good uh, plant also to take. Um, both the stem and the leaves can be eaten. So you see them out in your lawn or out, out there in the grass, just start picking and eating them. Very good. And they're also very good sugared as well. Take the little flowers and um, sugar them. They make really pretty little decorations on your dessert or on a salad. So eat up. Ginkgo is also um, a good plant for varicose veins. Um, it's more commonly known to help with memory, but it's also great for the circulation. And it's basically, um, it's also like a glue for holding the cells in connective tissue together. So keeping those veins tight, nice and firm so they can keep the, the, the blood pumping. And then it also another, um, advantage for taking ginkgo, it is also um, a blood enhancer. It keeps the blood circulation going um, nice and healthy. Uh, now we're going to go into some um, continuing with herbs. These are more along the astringent um, line. Um, astringents are, is a quality that tightens your connective tissue. Um, they, help, they help with varicose veins, but they're not really a actually helping with the cause, they're just kind of tightening those veins. So we got to keep in mind that we still need to focus on uh, diet, exercise, stress, and those things. Um, and then also something when taking um, the following um, astringents, they go throughout your whole body. They don't just go to one spot where you want them to go. They go all over the place. So um, because they are astringents, they're a drying agent. They're tightening, they're toning. And so you could start to maybe, you know, get dry mouth or um, drier skin. That is from the astringent. So then maybe you're taking, um, taking too much. So you want to make sure you're getting enough water intake um, as well. So the first one is horse chestnut. Um, it's probably the most popular treatment for varicose veins. Um, find any varicose vein cream um, spray, it's probably a good chance it's going to have horse chestnut in it. And it's that probably started around, oh, approximately about 20 years ago. It helps to tighten the tissue and it also slows the blood coagulation. So it keeps the blood flowing. Um, several studies, including one done in Italy in 2001, have shown that both oral and topical use have horse chestnut will work. And if you're taking it um, internally, uh, you want to take it uh, probably by, by a capsule and about 120 milligrams is, is sufficient. And then um, you do not want to um, eat it raw. It needs to be processed in some way because it is, it's a, it does have a mild toxicity and it will cause you to vomit. It's not going to kill you, but, but it will cause you to vomit because uh, it, uh, your body's saying uh, it has toxic, toxic substances in it, so processing it will remove those. Oak, our good old oak trees, whether it be bur or white oak, um, has many astringent qualities. Um, you can either use the bark or the leaf, um, especially in the form of a tincture, those will um, help. And, um, and oh, and these some of these items that I am going through here now, um, you can either, if, if you, um, as a, um, an herbalist, if you know how to um, process them, purchase um, and uh, take them. Otherwise, if not, there um, you can find these in any health store, and um, or or from a herbalist. Uh, they these are pretty um, pretty common to um, to get a hold of in today's world or online as well. Yep, yarrow is also an astringent. Um, you'll find it in the wild. The flowers can be white or yellow. Um, most herbalists say that the white flower is more potent than the yellow, but 
I've heard that yellow works just as well. So if that's what's there, use it. Use what you got on hand. Uh, yarrow, um, also with its astringent property, properties, is also uh, was also used to help stop bleeding from a cut or a scar. So if you ever get cut, grab some yarrow and just put it on there, and it will stop because it's, it's a blood clotter. And it was uh, commonly used during the Civil War to, to help the soldiers when they were um, injured and bleeding. It was uh, one of the, their um, uh, heavy used um, plants. So yarrow is very good, very common. St. John's wort is most of the time just thought of as for relaxation, emotional support, but it too is an astringent and can help. Um, this would be very good to be taken in, a, in an oil form um, topically. And it's, it's found um, in various areas of the um, United States. Um, and, and also, if you are looking for these plants, too, I just want to um, say, make sure you know what plant you are looking for and you've got the right plant. So many plants look the same. You want to make sure you've got the right plant. Um, but anyway, so um, St. John's wort is also a good one um, for astringency, especially for taking um, using on topical, which will um, help with varicose veins. Another thing that you can find um, in, in the local stores is castor oil. It is like the Arnica of Ayurveda, and it helps with treating traumatized and damaged structural and connective tissue. Um, it, it's used to kind of like tighten up tissue that has gone lax or is saggy. It'll help tone it back up. And what you can do is like take, make like a little castor pack Take like a little woolen um, cloth, put it on there, um, put it on your legs, maybe in the evening when you're watching TV, prop your leg up, make a little castor pack, let that castor oil soak into your legs um, for an hour or two. So that will work um, very well. Okay, now we'll get into, um, I'm going to touch a little bit on um, hemorrhoids. So hemorrhoids. Um, form in the hep the hepatic portal vein uh, and this vein is the largest vein in the body but it is not a true vein uh, all veins take the blood back to the heart the heptic portal vein takes the blood to the liver and so that is that's is why it's not really a true vein though it's kind of classified in the vein family uh, Usually um, hemorrhoids will occur because of liver stagnation. So make sure if you do um, have hemorrhoids, you're, you're kind of, you know, having your liver checked out, have some tests run because that could be a, could be a part. Um, though, like we said earlier, um, obesity, stand, um, doing a lot of standing, pregnancy, um, sitting for periods on end um, are also um, causes for um, hemorrhoids. Um, Carter S. Calsa, a licensed physician act, and acupuncturist practicing in New Mexico, um, says that from um, traditional Chinese medicine, that the liver disharmony and hemorrhoids play a big part. So he definitely is um, uh, believes that if you have hemorrhoids, there's something going on with your liver, and you need to get it checked out. And he says that um, beet and beet greens for 40 days will detoxify your liver and then relieve your hemorrhoids. So that is something to look at. Um, beet greens, if you go into like natural um, food stores, you can find them in the produce section um, very readily. Um, seen them available, which is great. Um, so that is um, something you want to go. I know beets aren't the most favored vegetable, but you know if you don't like just eating the boot, uh, you can eat the leaves, um, maybe saute the, um, the beet itself. There's also um, beet juices that um, you can buy as well. And if you don't like beets, there's just there's a lot of the other tap roots are also good for um, hemorrhoids, such as um, carrots, radishes, turnips, parsnips, rutabaga, burdock, and dandelion. So those are other uh, ones that you can look at to get um or to help with um hemorrhoids if you have that issue 
Okay, so some of the items that I did talk about, I just want to um, mention um, if you are interested or not. Um, I do have tinctures of um, some of those items. And um, tinctures, um, if you are unfamiliar with that, um, they're basically liquid extracts where the, the plant material is soaked in, a, in an alcohol base. Um, I use vodka personally. And it sits, I leave it sit for, um, for approximately four to six weeks uh, before, um, and then I strain it out. Uh, but that is what a tincture or liquid extract is. Um, I do have these available. Um, if, like I said, if you are interested, you can just get a hold of me at the Herbal Cash, or you can email me at the Herbal Cash at gmail.com, or um, I have them available on my Etsy site. You can get them there as well. They're also available in health food stores. Um, just go to the natural um, um, uh, supplement section, and um, you may be able to find them there. And then also, I did forget to put one item on the slide. I don't know why, how it slipped my mind, but I do make a, um, a cream. And um, the two key components in the cream are horse chestnut and yarrow. And it's one of my most popular items that I have available for my clients and that um, um, sells very well. And I've gotten a lot of good feedback on it. So horse chestnut and yarrow. Um, and like they said, horse chestnut is like the top item for helping treat varicose veins. So and if you have any um, questions or anything um, on, on these items for me, just please give me a shout out and I can um, help you either find them or um, help you or direct you to the right place to, to get them. So I hope you enjoyed um, this webinar. If you did, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am, my goal is to get more um, videos up on there, uh, trying to focus on either um, using herbs and also focusing on um, aging, like such as, um, you know, skin problems, stress, the amount of stress we have in today's life, diet, and that type of things, and how you can incorporate natural um, remedies, natural um, ways to to develop a better health um, for you as you age and, and then for your family as well. So um, please subscribe to that if you are interested. And so that is the, um, the information that I have provided on varicose veins. I hope you were able to um, get some takeaways from it and are, would be able to use those. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, please reach out and I'd be more than happy to um, answer them. And then also, I do have the references available for um, a lot of the statistics and um, information that I have. I do have those provided. So, And then if you need any more information, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can email me. Um, I, and also, you know, you can follow me. I am on Facebook. Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and now YouTube. So any um, any questions on um, this webinar tonight, or if you'd like information on another topic, please reach out. I like to I like to hear what people are interested in learning about. Uh, I actually present put this webinar together because I was selling so much of my varicose vein cream that I thought it was worthy and think I needed more information um, or educational information out there because obviously it was it's a concern for a lot of people so if, if i hear back i can definitely get um, some information together and i'd like to share it with you guys so i just want to thank everyone for joining me this evening and learning about varicose veins um, again i hope you're going away with some bit of knowledge to help you going forward to live a more healthy um, lifestyle and thank you and have a great evening bye now Thank mm -hmm. you.